Hello, I have been asked about how to address discipline with kids with Asperger's and one of the things mentioned was this kid having a particularly odd sense of humor with some of the things that he's done and I just wanted to say that for me I actually stopped making jokes completely because anytime I would make a joke it would be them giving me a weird look or just not thinking it was funny or something. It, I gave that up a long, long time ago because it would hurt my self-esteem too much to try to make a joke. You know, I, I think that, well, for me, I know that with Asperger's, it seems that you can't really throw people off by lying. You know, you're, you're too honest a person. You don't really understand liars or why people lie, and, and you don't know how to throw people off with the tone of your voice with a joke. So I just stopped making them. But for other people with Asperger's, I've seen that they have just really bizarre senses of humor that are just like, why what are you doing but i know for me i i just completely gave it up because i felt bad when people wouldn't laugh at stuff but people laugh when i do normal things because weird the way i say something or something but that's always a surprise and it's fun when that happens but um other thing addressed is that this kid felt ganged up on and it is kind of easy to feel ganged up on when you have asperger's because people don't understand you and I know for me there's been plenty of situations where it's like I thought I was doing something normal but I guess the tone of my voice was not that nice but I, I thought it was normal or something like that you know you got so much going on in your head that people aren't understanding or you, you might be frustrated but you think you sound normal I mean there's there's just so many things and then I know that for me when I was little I might have like a little party of people get together with my mom probably arranged it and I would actually ditch my own party to go to my room to play by myself and my this happened so many times too according to my mom and she would come up and ask what's going on and you know you're supposed to hang out with your party and I would say they're fine <laughs> I just want to play by myself and even when I was older like there'd be like a house full of people and sometimes it just was too much I just go to my room by myself and but I, I don't know I might not even come out but it just is too much in your brain. You don't you don't think about how it's a rude thing. You know, you just know that your brain is just overloaded and it, it just needs to calm down. And you know, you might call it like a sensory break or something when there's just there's too much going on and you just have to be in a cold dark place or just somewhere else for a while where you're not having to deal with it. It, might, it could have light. But I know that when I was little, I don't think I was a particularly bad kid, though I do think that I copied some things that my brothers would do from what I've heard. And um, you're supposed to have one area of interest when you're, you have Asperger's. Like You might be really, really fixated on one hobby for a long, long time, maybe forever. For me, when I was young, toddler age, it was Curious George. And when I was a little older, it switched to video games. And anybody that knew me when I was really little said that I watched Curious George obsessively. And I just watch it for hours and hours and hours but I do know that there was one incident that I'm not really proud of where I was supposed to bring sports stuff to a class and I completely forgot about it, it was just frisbees and throwing it around for an hour and it wasn't even a teacher it was a substitute teacher that had us and she had us a lot of that year because that teacher was pregnant and I actually ran away because I didn't have my frisbees and she told us that you know we could all play with each other and stuff but the, the coming up to someone else and, and playing with them with their frisbees it was just such a scary intimidating thing for me at that age and I I was freaked out because I didn't bring my stuff so I actually like went somewhere and hid for a while and the teacher finally found me and like kind of freaked out and this is after the class was already over and school was over and I just started crying hysterically and just freaked out and spazzed out I, I thought that I would be sneaky <laughs> I feel bad doing that. I bumped into her later. She was happy to see me. I think she liked me despite that. Sorry I did that. <laughs> but yeah, I do know that it's common for us for people to also get anxiety attacks or get meltdowns or get, get easily emotional. And I... Something that's a little bit weird is that I know that for me, I, I couldn't cry when I was a little bit older. And then it's like... 
a lot of things would happen over a course of a year or so and then something small would happen and set me off and I'd start like crying hysterically and I couldn't stop and people didn't know what was going on and it was like there was a block with it or something and I know that's that could have been considered like an anxiety attack but it was like because I, I couldn't cry so many times and then there'd be such a buildup that I just would go nuts or something it was like the dam just burst open and that was a little older not really a kid but that was sort of an example of an anxiety attack and it's important to note that these kids are very, very literal, and you need to say exactly what you mean. I know that there was one time where my mom told me to pull the dryer to make it stop or something, and I went down there and I like pulled and pulled and pulled, and it wasn't working, and I was getting so angry, and I came up to my mom, might have been once or twice, and she was kind of frustrated and came down there and just automatically pushed it and then she realized that she had said the wrong thing and she said sorry and hugged me and you know I did exactly what she told me to do but I, I wouldn't think to you know do it a different way you know you have to say exactly what you mean to someone with Asperger's especially a kid with Asperger's I've gotten better with hints now that I'm older but you know sometimes people give really vague hints that I'm supposed to understand and it makes no sense and that's kind of frustrating you know but Especially when you're a kid and you have Asperger's, you got to say exactly what you mean. And there might be things with kids where you'll wonder how they possibly couldn't get something, especially with social skills or, or things with school. It could be anything, though, but especially things with social skills and with hints and, and with being literal. And you might think, how can he not get something like that? But you have to understand that their brain works completely differently than neurotypicals. And you just have to really have the most sympathy with that that you can and patience too and when they do act up it might be difficult for them to see how it affects other people how something might be annoying or rude or disrespectful they might just think that they're being funny I, they might just think that they're making a joke even if nobody's laughing it's just funny for them and how exactly to discipline these kids I can't tell you an exact punishment I don't really believe in spanking I'm more like stand in a corner and think about what you've done but it, it's good to explain to them how it affects you, how it makes you feel, why it's rude, why it's inappropriate, um, maybe a solution to what they're doing if you, they can do a different thing, things like that. Like, try talking them through it, and if they're not respectful with that, th that's unfortunate. I don't, I don't know what to do about that. If it's somebody whose opinion they respect, it would probably be good to just explain to them things however you can, and that's all.